Ever found yourself staring at the ceiling on a Friday night wondering if being single is a blessing or a curse? Let's be honest, we've all been there. Ah, the sweet smell of singleness. It's a mixed bag, isn't it? One moment you're relishing in the freedom of not having to share your pizza or compromise on your Netflix choices, and the next you're staring into the abyss of loneliness, contemplating if your only companionship will be the resident houseplant. There's no denying it, being single does offer a certain level of freedom. Freedom to grow, to explore, to make mistakes, and to learn from them. It's like being the captain of your own ship. You get to decide the journey, the destination, and the speed. You get to chart your own course. But let's not forget the other side of the coin. As the saying goes, no man is an island, and sometimes the loneliness can creep in. The fear of missing out can feel as real as the fear of running out of ice cream on a hot summer day. The yearning for companionship, for shared experiences, for someone to laugh at your terrible jokes can sometimes feel overwhelming. And amidst this roller coaster of emotions, there's also the opportunity for self-development. Being single allows you to focus on yourself, to learn about your strengths and weaknesses, to challenge yourself, and to become the best version of you. It's like being in a relationship with yourself, and let's face it, who knows you better than you? But let's not forget about the humor of it all. The countless times you've had to dodge the why are you still single question at family gatherings, or the strange looks you get when you tell people you're dating yourself. It's a laugh a minute, isn't it? Well, you're not alone. Welcome to Eternal Stoicism, where we explore life's big questions. In the end, whether being single is a bane or a boon, it's all about perspective. Are you ready to dive in? So, you've been single for a while now and you've started to notice some changes. And you know what? Many of those changes are actually quite positive. First off, let's talk about self-reliance. Being single means you've got no one to lean on but yourself. It's just you, making your own decisions, solving your own problems, and that can be incredibly empowering. You're the captain of your own ship, and that's something to be proud of. Then, there's the independence. You get to live life on your own terms with no one else's opinions or preferences to consider. You're free to pursue your own interests, chase your own dreams, and march to the beat of your own drum. Finally, there's the freedom. Freedom to explore, to experiment, to learn, and to grow. Freedom to be you, unapologetically and unabashedly. And so, it seems, being single isn't all doom and gloom. Sounds like a party of one can be quite the celebration, eh? But like any party, the solo soiree has its downsides. Now don't get me wrong, being single can be liberating, but it does come with a few challenging aspects. Let's delve into some of the psychological effects that can cast a shadow over the joys of singlehood. Firstly, there's the dreaded L word, loneliness. Now it's important to distinguish between being alone and feeling lonely. You see, being alone is a state of being, but loneliness is a state of mind. It's possible to feel lonely even when surrounded by people. For some singles, the lack of a romantic partner can lead to feelings of isolation and sadness. It's like being at a party where everyone else has a dance partner, and you're left on the sidelines. Secondly, we have the fear of rejection. This is a common fear among singles, especially those who've had their hearts broken before. The thought of putting yourself out there again can be quite daunting. It's like standing on the edge of a high diving board looking down at the water below and wondering if it's safe to jump. It's not the fall that scares you, it's the thought of the cold, harsh splash at the end. Lastly, there's the fear of commitment. Now this might sound paradoxical. How can someone fear commitment if they're single and presumably looking for a relationship? Well, it's not as simple as it seems. For some, the idea of being tied down or losing their freedom is scarier than being single. It's like having a bird that loves to fly freely suddenly being put in a cage. The cage might be gilded, but it's still a cage. In a nutshell, while singlehood can be a period of self-discovery and freedom, it can also bring about feelings of loneliness, fear of rejection, and fear of commitment. These psychological effects can sometimes outweigh the upsides, making the journey of singlehood a bit less glamorous than it initially seems. So it's not all sunshine and rainbows in the land of the single. But remember, every cloud has a silver lining, and navigating these challenges can lead to personal growth and resilience. The key to enjoying your single status, like anything in life, is balance. And yes, that includes navigating the often turbulent waters of singlehood. Let's talk about that. The first strategy to manage the psychological effects of being single is self-care. It's not just about face masks and bubble baths, although those are lovely too. 
Self-care is about taking care of your mental, physical, and emotional well-being. It's about ensuring you're eating well, exercising, getting enough sleep, and taking time to relax and recharge. But self-care isn't just about what you do when you're alone. It's also about how you interact with the world around you. That brings us to our second strategy, maintaining social connections. Just because you're single doesn't mean you have to be alone. Reach out to friends, family, colleagues, join social groups, clubs, or sports teams. Volunteering can also be a wonderful way to connect with others and give back to your community. The third strategy is pursuing hobbies and interests. This is your time to shine, to explore what you love without having to consider anyone else's interests or preferences. Do you love painting? Go for it. Have you always wanted to learn how to play the guitar? Now's the time. Maybe you've always dreamed of traveling to Italy to learn how to make authentic pizza. Why not? The beauty of these strategies is that they don't just help manage the psychological effects of being single. They also make life more enjoyable and fulfilling, regardless of your relationship status. They enable you to build a life you love living, one where you're the star. But remember, none of these strategies are about trying to fill a void or distract yourself from being single. They're about enhancing your life, making it richer, more colorful, they're about celebrating you. So don't fret about being single. Embrace it, enjoy it, savor the freedom, the independence, the adventure. And remember, it's not about being single or being in a relationship, it's about being happy. So now that we've explored the highs and lows of singlehood, the question remains, is it better to be single or in a relationship? Well, there's no one size fits all answer to this question. It's all about personal choice and readiness. Some people thrive in relationships, while others find their zen in solitude. It's important to understand that neither state is inherently better or worse than the other. Imagine, if you will, life as a grand buffet. There are all sorts of delightful dishes on offer. Some people might prefer the hearty comfort of a relationship roast, while others might find more joy in the light and zesty salad of singlehood. It's all about personal taste and what suits your palate at this particular moment in your life. In our society, there's often a pressure to pair off, as if being in a relationship is the only route to happiness. But that's simply not the case. You can have a wonderfully fulfilling life as a single person. You can pursue your passions, build strong friendships, and enjoy the freedom that comes with not being tied down. On the other hand, being in a relationship can bring its own unique joys and challenges. There's the comfort of companionship, the thrill of romantic love, and the opportunity to grow and learn with another person. But it also requires compromise, sacrifice, and a whole lot of patience. The key is to choose what feels right for you. Are you at a point in your life where you feel ready and willing to share it with someone else? Or do you feel more drawn to the freedom and independence of singlehood? It's your life, and only you can make that decision. Remember, your relationship status doesn't define you. You're not incomplete if you're single, nor are you complete if you're in a relationship. You are a whole valuable person, just as you are. In the end, it's not about what society expects, but what makes you feel fulfilled. So I ask you, are you content with where you are right now? Are you happy being single, or are you ready for the commitment of a loving relationship? Before we wrap up, let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned. Today, we've embarked on a journey, exploring the intricate psychological effects of being single for extended periods. We've seen that being single can be both a bane and a boon, depending on one's perspective and approach to life. We've delved into the upside of being single, the freedom it affords, the self-discovery it encourages, and the personal growth it nurtures. We've also taken a deep dive into the downside, the potential loneliness, the societal pressure, and the fear of missing out that can sometimes accompany a single life. We've navigated the turbulent waters of singlehood, discussing strategies to cope with its challenges and to harness its benefits. We've explored the importance of balance, self-care, and maintaining healthy relationships with others, even when we're not romantically involved. And we've tackled the million-dollar question, to be single or not to be single. We've underscored that there's no one-size-fits-all answer to this. It's a deeply personal decision, influenced by a multitude of factors, and it's entirely okay to be unsure. What's crucial, though, is that we prioritize our personal happiness and fulfillment regardless of our relationship status. We must remember that our worth is not defined by whether we have a partner or not, but by our character, our actions, and our contribution to the world. Being single can be a time of profound growth and self-discovery. It can also be a time of loneliness and self-doubt. 
but whether we choose to remain single or to pursue a relationship, it's essential that we do so with a clear understanding of our needs, our desires, and our capacity for love and commitment. So tell us, are you happy being single, or are you ready for the commitment of a loving relationship? Don't forget to like and subscribe to Eternal Stoicism for more thought-provoking content like this. Until next time, stay strong, stay stoic.